Hey kids. What up, Mr. Lean Zone? What a wild, wild market. Let's go at it. What do you want to talk about? What, what's wild about it? Tell, first of all, tell me what's wild about it. What does that mean? Every day I have conversations with people. This has been going on for decades. And every conversation starts with, JC, crazy market, wild market. Wow, what a crazy day in the market. When is it not crazy? Oh, I think that's a good, good point. I meant wild in the sense that I've seen everything, right? And sorry, by seeing everything, that's a lot. I haven't seen fucking anything because 2020 has been lit, as I say, with Todd Harrison. And they don't have a, a should have some booze. Happy but, hour with traders. Salud, brother. Yo, I just ordered gumbo from New Orleans. I move markets, bitches. <laughs> this is, what is it, sober time with VCs? What is this? It's not as sexy of a show. <laughs> the, the, the thing that fascinates me about this year is ideas are coming at me. This is what makes me, you know me, I'm always bullish. I hate the word bullish. I'm always optimistic. I think that's, I try and be infectious that way, right? I have fucking, so, so I talk about sports all the time, football. Same fucking playing field. Same distance across, same distance length. Yeah, they've changed kicking. For good or bad, they've made the kicks longer. But everything else is, right, the extra point is now like a thing. Uh, and the, most kicks go in the end zone. Yeah, maybe that's safer for the player. But other than that, no matter how big these guys get, the same fucking plays. And yet, it's still a magnificent game. The angles are changing. Um it's, it's a beautiful game. I'm finding myself really enjoying NFL without the fan. Like, I'm just enjoying NFL, right? They're playing for the love of the game. And I had Kelvin Beecham on. He's kind of a Well, friend. they're getting paid pretty well, too. Then it's neat. Of course. But they're showing up. The true ones are showing up, and they're playing their hearts out with no – you know what I mean? And they're probably yeah. playing better because there's no distractions. Okay, so here we are, the markets, right? We actually have more distractions than ever. COVID, healthcare, stress maybe lack of what my day job is, but yet the markets have just been there and, and I'm getting ideas at a place that I never thought I would get ideas of, whether it's a, a random, you know, DM from someone who doesn't trade, who works at a company, you know, that's on Robin hood now to, to friends in the energy space to they're just coming at me. And there's so many smart people. And I, and I think it's bef it's just messing with the heads of the old timers who think that there's this playbook or textbook. And that's what's wild about it is that fucking thing is out the window. It's been out, though. I know. I know. But it's really out the window. For us, it's funny yeah. because we're open to this new stuff. Like I just had a there's no way I trade fuel cell. Except in 2020, that fucking thing has been a perennial 20 year bag of fleas. And this week I caught like a seven point move in a perennial penny stock. I don't even buy penny. You know what I mean? And here I am with an open mind and I've had my biggest return has been in a stock I've done no work on. And I'm not saying I'm good or bad. I'm just saying that's wild that the social network and my community is surfacing ideas and I'm like somewhat breaking rules, but within my parameters to make money off things that I never would have tried before. How okay. close were you? How cl So obviously you had some sort of vision for this a decade plus ago. How close were you to where we are today? What you foresaw back then? Close? What'd you, what'd you yeah. miss? The only thing that I think is not there as we talk about it is the bar. I think Barstool has done what maybe CNBC, we expected someone to do in an era of YouTube. We're pretty clear what we are. Um, you know, I, I'm not sitting saying I have some great knowledge of it. I can't be held responsible for total idiots. I think it's coming now with TikTok and you're working on it at All Star Charts and you're putting together a, a band of people and StockTwits has always thought about this, but leave it to the biggest, smartest, smartest I say with things because Wall Street thinks they're smart and we haven't fucking solved anything and it took like these weird toys to change the market, right? Robin Hood was laughed at, but you and I got it early. Um, Koi Finn. Uh, it, you can do almost everything you can on a Bloomberg, except talk to other billionaires over Bloomberg chat, maybe, and get bond data. 
You could just text them. And by the way, bonds are zero percent interest, so maybe who cares about bond data at this point? So kind of the markets are doing things for us and for human beings that they never thought was possible. It's a social renaissance. It's a revolution that we have that it's a level playing field where since the beginning of time, only the wealthiest and most powerful people had access to the information necessary in order to profit from public markets. That's no longer the case at all. You were joking with me today because like I made fun. You had Palantir as an idea that I'm like, no, there's got to be better ideas. That, we like, nailed it. How'd you, like come on, Lindsay. I handed that to I you. On you a handed it to me platter. technically, but I'm so mentally over that company. Handed that it to me. Like, up. look. But what I'm saying is the ideas are coming out of everywhere. Then you were joking with me. Was, oh, this rotation, Howard, how'd you catch it? Well, I've been talking about this rotation for months and I've been eyeing two companies to get ahead of the rotation. I've been writing about them and only two companies. I only have to follow two companies to follow the rotation. That's Simon Property Group, which is like the highest, best, the highest ranked, highest respected mall operator and Boeing. Forget about how financialized it got and how bad that management ran it. When you think of Boeing, you think of America and you think of ingenuity and engineering and you think of fucking planes, whether that, you know, the 737 is a mess because of financial more than it is engineering. So I've been watching those two stocks for a year and I don't know the financials, but I said, if there's going to be a turn, it's going to show up in those two stocks. First. Now, granted, it'll show up in the airlines, but they have more leverage. I hate the airlines. I don't care what they do. I just don't trust them. There's too many moving parts, but I could watch Simon Properties and Boeing and know that a rotation is on. I don't have to look at anything else. What about I mean, the fact that the real, you know, because these, these, these could be just mean reversions, right? Could we, be. We, don't have, yeah, I have no on, idea. we don't have enough evidence that suggests that, no evidence. that we're going to have extended outperformance out of, out of these laggards. What we do have data that suggests that we can continue to have, and we expect continued outperformance out of small caps and mid caps. That's the real rotation that I think is getting ignored. And I know you participate in that space. How do you feel about that? What are you seeing there? There's so many things that are happening. Paul. I was just talking to first smart guys. Uh, Rick Heinzman is a great private investor, Pinterest, Airbnb, Shopify, DraftKings about this crossover where where you went so long without IPOs that VCs got comfortable never talking about public companies. And here we are in 2020, and there's no choice. A company that might have been private for an extra 10 years is going to SPAC. And now you got to deal with the fact that it's a public company again. You know nothing about public markets, so you better get your ass in gear. So it's never been a better time to, for a guy like me, as stupid as I am, because I have some knowledge across the spectrum of investing. I know how people think in private markets and I know how think people think in the public markets. And I've always said for the last 10 years, this is the piece that's just coming together. I always said they're connected. And the piece of the Bloomberg terminal that they'll never have is that. They have all this bond data and they have their social network, but they definitely don't have Twitter, stock twits, TikTok, Snapchat. The people well, where does TikTok about, fit in all this? Really? Are you just throwing them in there? Because like maybe no, one day. Because TikTok is engagement and that's where stuff is happening. That's where new celebrities are born. That's where new influencers are born because they're not, you can't just say I'm, I'm famous on Twitter or Instagram and be famous on TikTok. So it's the first true new breakout phenomenon and no one expected it because it was a roll up of a musically with some Chinese company. It wasn't even like built originally that way it was like a mashup so it's like some godzilla uh of a of a of a company that uh changes the landscape meaning my daughter is spending people are spending hours on tiktok like in the 70s or 80s they would do on mtv are you so it, are you on tiktok no but my daughter will send me some and i laugh or i don't know how to like uh, but i imagine if you click through there's a rabbit hole of 20 that you'll see but what i'm saying is the terminal is dead, right? That's cool. Okay. I definitely was of the camp that's saying you can't kill the Bloomberg terminal. Only Bloomberg can kill Bloomberg. Well, I think what's happening is Bloomberg isn't even killing Bloomberg. The markets are changing. And like I said, with 0% interest rates, they're lock on bonds. Good luck. Have it. They don't have a lock on private markets. They don't have a lock on media. They don't have a lock on trust. 
They don't have a lock on data. And um, it's a great company, but there's, there's a chance to be many Bloombergs out there. And that's exciting. The other thing that, like I said, I got wrong was media. I still think financial media is just this huge opportunity that I started with Wall Strip and Stock Twits. And I'm excited for the next 10 years of financial media because the game is now open because of Robin Hood and Koi Finn and, and DraftKings and, and TikTok that people are just... And what, and the other media players just are not producing quality content? They're not in, you know, their people audience is... Quality. I don't think like two guys with a small audience can move a market because they're the right market. Like you have to, you got to go to the corners of the internet to find good research. Like um, whoever can mash up thoughts in their head and project the next six months uh, in an interesting way, and it doesn't have to be financially driven, could be the great new analysts of our time. And, you know, from Sean on your end to Ivan on my end, learning how to they weren't options traders, but learning how to take their ideas and express them in options, that's an interesting thing. And the fact that on Robinhood, you could buy one lot so yeah. you can actually participate with three, $400 on a trend and actually make two grand versus making 40 bucks after commissions is something. So those are the things that are like day one, right? And so, you know, I'm pinching myself that I can actually somehow be it catch a lot of these moves and things that aren't out, that are a little bit outside my scope of knowledge. So I think if I can do it, anybody can do it. So what's the trade by Bitcoin? <laughs> the trade has been to own Bitcoin. I don't know about to keep buying it right here. It feels like it goes much higher because I'm like, don't know how to even, I don't even check my, what's account. much higher a million. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's like, it's not, it's not a 50 tour. times, 50 times from here. No, I, I, don't, I, I don't care about the price targets. It's going higher because it should be zero. The fact that it should be zero means that not, it's going And it's high. not. Right. So so if anything should be zero, it should be zero. It's, it's had plenty of time to go to zero. Plenty. Yeah. And plenty of stories from people losing their ass to yeah. forgetting their codes to losing it to everything, you know. And um, the supply, assuming the supply is what it is, then yes, it's going much higher because in an era of uh, stress and zero interest rates, people want something with a fixed amount that they could trust, that they can move cross borders and they could start their own life again. So I'm very bullish on, on crypto. And for now it's Bitcoin because I don't, I haven't what done about the other ones. What about Ethereum? We've been bullish I that too. Yeah, but I haven't done the work to really understand why it would be. Bitcoin just makes sense because of supply and demand and the and the macro world. It makes more What's sense. What's the difference between the Ethereum and supply and demand also? Well, if if because there's no limited supply. They talk about burning off at some point burning off the supply. They're going to do a secondary essentially? No, to keep it static, they're just going to burn supply as it gets used as it gets built to like do I don't know what that means. Exactly. Talk to me like I'm like a three-year-old. Well, and support? since I can't, I'm not comfortable owning it. Because I can't talk to you like it's a three-year-old, what's the point of me owning Got it? it? If you can't explain it, then. I can't convert anybody else to the religion. You know, if it's far-fetched, I can convert people to the you idea. I like that. That thing has been an absolute beast. Yeah. And it's kind of brought me back into Stitch Fix, even though I don't love the product. I understand the value prop of it. And so now that looks like a beast if you pull up Stitch Fix. Yep. Right? And so it's, you know, the fact that I'm learning this stuff and building, you know, my confidence and understanding these stories and how big these platforms can be, that's cool. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. I'm pretty excited about this um, next generation of new investors. And to be honest, this whole slowdown in the fangs over the last few months has been great. People are... Are, are probing into other areas and that's just good we need well, more what people are failing to realize is that while technology communications index discretionary has been consolidating since the summer and underperforming the small cap discretionaries small cap tech small cap communications are breaking out mid cap tech they're breaking out so just because the large mega caps are consolidating doesn't mean that the sector's underperforming it's just, it's a market cap thing. 
That's what I think people are failing to realize. It just so happens that most of these big market cap names are in the tech space or communications. Yeah, I think it's the healthiest move. Listen, you usually expect some kind of retracement. We just went from a VIX of 90 to a VIX of 20 during a pandemic. The news has not really gotten better. Back to 40. Back to 40. But I mean, pretty much a straight line back to 20 other than a few days. And the news has not changed. The, the vaccine news is great, but we are a long way from getting there. And we have a long winter on the East Coast and cold weather ahead. People can do what they want, but it's a long winter. The data says there's going to be a lot of cases and a lot of deaths. That's not good. So I am surprised, but not betting against the market, that we haven't seen that fear. Well, the, the, the market is, is clearly uh, pricing in not the end of the world. Clearly at this point. You've got to be really insane to continue to press your bets, you know, and I remember very clearly all the smarty pants of 2800 S&P after it V bottomed, you know what I mean? Drawing their lines in the sand saying this is it for the S&P. Well, here we are at 3600. I haven't heard them come back on CNBC and flip. Right. So they've already missed 40 percent, you know. So who are these experts? And how much money is too much to manage? And the other thing we're seeing is when you give kids access to their own money and they're not competing against it's an index, they're just trying to play the game and get more money in their account, their risk behaviors change. They're not as wild as you think. They don't worry about 10% dips. You know what I mean? They learn to play the game. They learn to manage money according to their own risk. And correct me if I'm wrong. The fact that investors, I don't have the data. You can probably touch on it better than me, but investors are starting younger and younger, right? And that's just going to make them smarter, wiser investors younger also, right? Make them smarter, but understand the game they're playing. When you and I were young, the game was to become a professional and run a hedge fund. Today's True. game is just make your account worth more money. Good There's point. There's many more ways to make your account worth more money than there is to get on Wall Street to make someone else's Good point. money. And that's yeah. the biggest point going forward that I don't think the market's figured in is, yeah, retail will blow up. Certain areas of retail will blow up. But this 10 to 25% move of retail is such a huge move because this 25% of retail is playing the game completely different. They're playing it like a video game. And they'll trade anything if it means their account will be higher in six months. Or Whether it's Bitcoin months. or Microsoft or one of yeah. these. They're not know, digging into the ground stocks. on 16 pages of research and then doing what old people say they're going to do. These kids are like, fuck, if that ain't working, I'm out. So I have is nobody this, uh, to report to. I have nobody to report to. I don't have to write a monthly letter and worry about redemptions. I just got me and my account. And how do I make it worth more? And I think once people start playing the game as if it's supposed to be played, it's like how to get my account up and to the right, they'll start playing the game better. Now, I don't know what, there's obviously going to be losers. But is that a bullish catalyst for technical analysis? Because... Like You're actually bullish. doing what's working instead of what we've always done. We've always done it this way. Bitcoin is the most is the biggest development for technical analysis of all time. And it helped trading view, which a company that I could have. What about Tesla? In. Tesla also. There's no fundamental analysis in Tesla. Same thing as Bitcoin. Yeah. And I think exactly. And I, I call we moved from the pencil era to the Excel era. So we went from pencils where deals were done by pencil. And so no deals could get done because you had to trust that someone didn't change a number. Then you went to the Express spreadsheet, which allowed this explosion in innovation because you could do acquisitions because you had a spreadsheet that you could pass around and you could value at this and you could change interest rates half a point and see what your IRR was going to change. It was just a spreadsheet world. And then we blew that up because no one trusted the fucking input output. And now we're in the post spreadsheet world, which is a Tesla world, which is I don't fucking want your spreadsheet. This brand is worth a trillion. Right. And yeah, I'm going to trade against that barometer. So when it's down 20 percent, I know it's going to be worth a trillion. So I'm willing to take that risk. And that's all technical. That's all people gauging risk reward, upside versus downside, position sizing, whether they think they're doing it, they're learning all that because they have some beyond the spreadsheet look at how the markets work. So, I mean, is gold over. Have we seen the end of gold as we know it as a safe, defensive? Is that not is that never going to be Probably because I actually own some? It's over. And it's not doing what it should. Why do. do you own gold? Since because when do you, you invest should be in gold? doing? I mean, it looks terrible again today, but it, it 
well, I don't own a lot. I'm just saying, like Bitcoin, it's in, a, in an environment like this where money printing and chaos and like yelling and everybody for themselves kind of exists. Gold should be doing a lot better. And by the way, the last 20 years, gold's done phenomenal. Compared and the to fact that it, the fact that it's not um, is evidence. Yeah, the fact that no kid cares if gold's a hedge. You know what I mean? They don't want to lump. Canadian kids do. They, the Canadian kids like the gold. They hear their parents and grandparents. You know that. They do, they, they do like their factors <laughs> and their gold. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is one of the greatest moments in financial markets. Only to probably be followed by another nightmare. When? Yeah. Who cares? What I mean, do you mean who worst? cares? You're telling me about a nightmare. When's the nightmare going to be? Not next year. The year after, maybe? So next year is going to be sm smooth sailing? Well, if you own the wrong stocks, your next nightmare is right now. Yeah, if you own the if you own the wrong stock, your nightmare starts as we speak. I just think, what is a nightmare to a kid that just survived COVID and is up sixty percent since then? They don't know what a nightmare. You and know, probably started his own company because he was stuck at home. Company, they're doing fucking Khan Academy classes. They're learning. My friend at First Mark just did like a whole school uh, created a whole curriculum around going public and what it's like you can just go and just whatever information you want yeah with with no money if you know how to fucking find people and get mentorship and surf the web what do we help wall street bound the guy like he co yeah. cold emails me and now he's got like one of the most incredible brands for like helping young people but we just raised 70 grams. So it's like, yeah, oh, he did cool. the same thing. He cold called me and I'm like, yeah, dude, this is great. Whatever you want, whatever I can do to help inner city kids, like learn about finance. Yeah, of course I'm going to help you. Why wouldn't I? The more players, the better. Yeah. What makes, what made 10 cents game, whatever that game that everybody was playing better is that everybody could play. So the, the game of money gets better. Now who can wreck the game? You know, the government as they've done with, you know what I mean? Like there's different casualties as, there's a government that's involved. So there's going to be casualties along the way based on the performance of the government, which is kind of the referee of the game. And so it's our job to kind of read the refs, just like a coach yells at a ref. Yeah, there's not really any refs in America. It's a China thing and stuff like that, right? There's refs. There's, there's Trump was bullying his own Fed chair to lower rates. I'm saying. Yeah, Fed but from an individual like stock to stock standpoint, there's no ref. I mean. Well, there's a ref in the sense that bonds are affected because of the money printing and the fact that, right so okay, but they're telling you that but, but they're telling ignore you or that is a disaster for people that thought rates are going to rise not understanding the the, the refs were being okay, fine that's fine rate so what does that have to do with individual stock performance i don't know yet I, that's not, what does that have to do with zoom or docusign do a lot if you're Peloton. if you're going to do if assuming and i'm not saying they're valid anymore discounted cash flow matters Interest rates have a ton to do with that because it depends what year you want to look at Zoom. You think Zoom's doing what it's doing because of rates, Howard? Some of it, yes, of course. Absolutely. At the margin, huge amount of money is pouring into higher growth stocks because people feel like in a zero interest rate world, there is parts of the textbook that are not broken or forgetting broken, not broken. That still makes sense. Yeah. Because some, some fundamentals do matter, right? There are some basic fundamentals that matter. Well, that's what we're doing is analyzing. The, we're analyzing the behavior of all of those fundamental investors. That's yeah. what we're doing. They're doing the work. Yeah, Of course they're doing the work. And we have to trust at that level that they're not stupid. And the work gets harder the more money you manage because you now start to second guess whether you how much work you're supposed to do or should you trust the people well, doing the, the, the bigger you are the bigger the position and liquidity is an issue and things like that we could be more nimble yeah. as individuals and you you aren't you just don't feel the pressure if you're only worth 300 dollars, or you're only or, or you have a job and you're busy you're just going to be learning the game but if that becomes your life every move becomes a little more important. So, so again, I think we're in this good period where there's so many new people and it's not affecting their life and they're learning the game on their spare time that they have because of COVID and their friends talking about stocks and they've got Robin Hood. This is like an unknown boom that was not expected to happen in the markets. So, so what I think will happen now, which I thought would have happened, you asked me what long story short of what would happen is 
media, educational, financial media is going to become way more important. And the CNBCs of the world, the people that don't get it are going to get further and further left behind. And there's going to be- Why don't they get, why do you think they don't get it? Because it's TV. It's not even their fault. TV is only can do what TV does. You know, it's, it's linear. It, it, it can only, you can only watch one thing. Whereas, you know, the inputs from all over, I mean, CNBC.com is doing way better than CNBC TV, but then you got to deal with like, who's the author and what's the reason they're writing the story. I'd rather just talk to people with their own skin in the game, period. I was going to say, have, it's the incentives because they're selling ads is the issue. Yeah. They're not. We are now at a period where there's millions of people that you know with skin in the game that you will call before you turn on the TV. Because the TV is the yeah, last place you would go for information. I would, yeah. For a long time, until very recently, it was still the first place you went. Now it's the last place you go. And it must have been some sad times. It was sad. <laughs> and I think once more people learn how to do. Well, they this, already have. Like the st- I was looking at the stats now. The only people left that are watching basic cable are boomers. Yeah. They're the only ones left. Like, are they? Is it because they're just used to it, or they're the ones that are the easiest to fool into watching cable? Habit. Or just- it's just habit, and they've just they get stuck with the vanilla, like the warm blanket of who's they've been talking to them, Joe Kernan or whatever media person, and they just that's who they that's their drug. That's who they go to. These new kids are just new people are. And what? It's just touch. It's tough to teach an old dog new tricks. Like they're just like the kids never got those habits. They're like already on TikTok before they even know how to turn the TV on. Yeah. Yeah. It's an exciting time. And and we're seeing it in the market. What are you seeing? I mean, you're seeing the same stuff, right? The markets are healthy. I think um, the, the, this year I get asked a lot now, obviously, like I'm on all these lists, you know, JC, we're making a list of the top, you know, what did you learn in 2020? What's your favorite chart? So I'm thinking about this a lot because I keep getting asked. And I think the biggest lesson this year is the importance of relative strength. Like I came into this year, like knowing how important, or I thought I knew how important relative strength was. As you're well aware, you've been watching my stuff forever. Everything for me is a relative world. I'm telling you right now, Howard, coming into this year, I, as much as I thought relative strength was important, I was underestimating just how important it is. Because even in the depths of the, uh, of the, of the pandemic, Markets having some of the worst days ever. The the stocks showing relative strength absolutely exploded from there. You Stock know, just signs, legendary move. moves. Yeah, the, all the COVID stocks, unrelated to the drug stocks. The drug stocks actually had a move, and some of them have given them back because that was the obvious hedge. The the relative strength winners: Zoom, DocuSign, uh, Etsy. Uh, you know, far monsters. Fetch monsters the, the peloton rest- snapchat wayfair restaurant you know restoration hardware kind of was late but wayfair it's just those first movers Man. that stop going down well that's the that. lesson when when your whole screen is red f- find the ones that are still green for some reason when you have a shit week and the week gets slaughtered go and see which ones didn't get slaughtered yeah. You know, same thing. If the market's up, like in like in this market that we're making all time highs, like if your stocks aren't going up, <laughs> that's a bad sign. You know, so what same I am thing. saying to you about rates, JC, if rates weren't zero, the playbook would be a little different. Meaning be, the relative thing showed up in growth stocks. It didn't show up in gold. It did show up in Bitcoin. So that's a form of gold in many ways because it's a store of value, theoretically, a digital store of value. So the playbook did work also a little bit but yes i think we learn I, I will agree with you that relative strength is the one tool you can look at the market twice a year and generally on the worst possible weeks of the year is when you should be looking and just look for the areas of green during blood red moments and just try and understand the story of why they're green right try and piece that story together and then just close your eyes and um I forget Green which Mar- I think that. it was March or April. One of those months, I think it may have been March. We looked at the best performing. We did like one of those bubble charts. It was like the best performing. And like the best performer, one of the outliers was Chinese internet. Chinese internet showing relative strength when the market's getting destroyed. Yeah, like right. that's, you wouldn't expect that. You figure those would be getting slaughtered, you know, twice as much as everything else. Relative strength. And then now look at those things. I mean, just... I mean, if there's anything I've learned is that I underestimated the power of relative strength. So good.
I'm OG, overly grateful for the chance to kill the beat, bro. Kane and Abo ain't trying.